Our next caller is Jonathan from Colorado. Hey, what's up, Jonathan? How can we help you? Uh, not much. Thanks. I appreciate you guys taking my question here. Um, so I just had a question about how do I overcome burnout? Um, a little bit of history with that. I started taking my health pretty seriously when I was 27, 28. Um, I had reached 315 pounds and it was just kind of affecting my relationships, my personal life, you know, as I know you guys can probably, you can probably know that. Um, but I started out with, uh, doing the beach body programs, their, their hit training and got really into that. Lost a bunch of weight, lost about 90 pounds in a little over a year. Um, and after about a year, like I just, I got tired. I felt like I, I had, I either had to increase or I needed a break and took a break from that. And that break turned into, you know, almost six months to a year of not working out. Um, and then started to get down myself again and, and decided to try uh, weight training um, and I was definitely the new guy at the gym that forgot to clip the bar and would drop the weights and, you know, eventually got you know, my bearings there in the gym and fell in love with that. But again, after about a year, um, I started to get fatigued. I stalled out and I, I, I thought to myself either I have to increase myself to increase my time in the gym to about two hours, you know, almost every workout, which I don't have the time for. Um, so I took a break again. Um, and then again, about a year later, decided to try CrossFit. We're going to skip over that because I know how you guys feel about that. Mm -hmm. Um, again, did CrossFit for about a year, started to get burnt out, took a break and then joined a strength and conditioning gym. And, and kind of the common theme is just that, you know, every year or so I just seem to hit that wall and take a break and then lose a lot of the progress that I've made. And, and so I was just wondering what kind of advice or, you know, guidance you would give for somebody overcoming burnout. There's, there's another common theme going on here. Yeah. You tend to, you, you tend to get attracted to all the wrong programs. For yeah. You, bro. Yeah. You did beach body, <laughs> uh, CrossFit, the strength and conditioning hit, hit program, like also, just all the things opposite of what I'd have you do if you were a client of mine. Yeah. And you know, also okay. Jonathan, um, I, you sound a little down on yourself by the way you're talking about, you know, how you've handled things in the past, the way you gained weight, how you felt, how you lost weight, how you gave up. Yeah. And so I would say the root issue of what's happening here is you're entering into fitness uh, with a negative mindset. And I don't mean negative like I can't do this. I mean negative about yourself, which yeah. is pushing you to choose workouts that beat you up. Mm -hmm. So this is actually, uh, without you realizing it, you're punishing yourself physically through exercise and your answer to stalled progress is to beat yourself up more. So what, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to enter into fitness with a completely different attitude, which is I'm going to take care of myself through exercise and exercise is a way to improve my quality of life. Okay. So that means it's going to mold and shape based upon the context of your life as it currently is. That means sometimes you'll work out harder. Sometimes you'll work out not as hard. Sometimes you'll work out more and sometimes you'll work out less because you're going into it to improve the current state of of the quality of your life. So if you're going real hard and you hit a wall and you feel burnt out, the answer then would be to work out less or to train in a way that allows your body to feel better, not necessarily feel like you have to throw more intensity at it or give up altogether. Because by the way, this is very similar to when people go into diets with the same mentality, because at some point, Jonathan, you get sick of hating yourself, which is probably why you quit. You probably get to the point where you're like, you know what, forget it. I just want to enjoy my life. I'm not going to do this anymore. And then the cycle repeats. This is a very hard conversation. A lot of times people don't realize there's multiple gears, uh, you know, that you can apply uh, that'll get you to your destination. And uh, just always kind of throwing it in and redlining your way there. Uh, inevitably, uh, you know, you're going to you're going to hit a wall. You're going to get to that point where you just can't take it anymore. But it's true. There's, there's this little sort of uh, version of yourself. You're punishing. You're trying to trying to kind of change yourself and force yourself to get there when uh, listening to your body and and kind of weaving through all these different uh, challenges in front of you is a much better approach. And uh, to come in with a completely different attitude is going to shape everything for you. I, I want to make sure that we tell you though that this is actually extremely common. Yeah, this is this is the this number is, one reason why is, people stop. Yeah, it's right. And this is like uh, eighty percent of my clients, like when you when they first hire you. So. Yeah. It's really common that, and it, we just had it. We actually just had a live caller right before you, <clears throat> and afterwards we were talking about her. And one of these things that we we tend to do with fitness is we think that the more we do, the harder we do, the more results that we get. And that's that's that applies to a lot of things in life. You work harder, you, you make more money. You study more for a test, you're probably going to do better at it. The thing with losing body fat 
in building muscle, it doesn't work that way. The more and the harder you go at it does not equal more results. The right amount is what will equal the most amount of results. And finding what that sweet spot is for you is key. And what almost everybody does is they make the decision on the program they're going to do or train the way they're going to do based off their current state. Oh, I'm down on myself. Like Sal saying, like, oh, I, I don't like the way I feel. I don't like the way I look. I'm going to go in there and get after this. Or it's a New Year's resolution. I'm going to go in and get after this. And then they throw the whole kitchen sink at their body. Now, yeah. temporarily, they see results. So, of course, if I took somebody who was sitting on the couch, eating bad food, not moving, and I put them on a hit hit program or throw them on CrossFit for the next six months, like, and you stay consistent for six months, you'll probably lose weight. The problem is you went from one extreme to the other extreme, and that's not realistic probably for you or any most other people. So the strategy with someone like you, and if you were a client of mine and I got you right now, I'd actually start you really, really low, one to two days a week. Mm. One to two days a week, an hour routine, like a MAPS anabolic, We and we would build on that. I would make you come to me begging for more time in the gym before I would give it to you. I would say, listen, let's make sure this is realistic with the balance of your life. Let's focus more on building muscle right now. Let's not try and burn a ton of calories and lose a lot of body fat. Let's build this metabolism up so it's working for you and focus on building strength. And that's hard to get somebody who is wanting to lose 50, 100 pounds, they want to drop a bunch of body fat to get them to, to reframe how they approach the training to, hey, I want to build muscle and build your metabolism right now and only train yeah. one or two days a week. That seems so counter of what they want to do or think they should do. But in reality, it's the most beneficial direction for someone like you is to train like that. And then over time, we will slowly build up the amount of time that you're spending in the gym. You do it that way and you will never get burnt out. You're always looking to do more and, and you're keeping yourself held back. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you everything. some guidelines, John. Uh, yeah. You got to feel better after your workout than you do before. Uh, so you got to feel good. Yet Your energy should be higher. You should feel like you're contributing to the quality of your life. When that stops happening, something's wrong. Okay. So think of it that way. That's the way. Now, I, I also noticed that you said that you went on TRT recently. Uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> how has that experience been? So you went through uh, mphormones.com. I'm assuming you went through Dr. Rand's team. Um, so I'm actually in, in Denver, Colorado. So I, I look for a, a local, uh, TRT clinic out here. Um, but so I found one in, in Denver tech center. So it's revive MD. Um, but yeah, when I, when I first, uh, started, so yeah, when I was looking for a, a health and fitness podcast to listen to, I did a bunch of research and looked at a bunch of review websites and you guys were at the top of almost every single list. And I really thank God for leading me to you guys. Cause I think the first episode I listened to was the, the one with Dr. Ann and oh, wow. just kind of hit home on, on a lot of what I was, you know, no focus, no real motivation to do anything. Just kind of, I mean, I, I remember I would sleep on the weekends. I'd get, you know, 16 hours in bed, wow. you know, Saturday and Sunday and still feel completely exhausted. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. after I listened to that website or that podcast, I, uh, I reached out to somebody that I respect out here. He's a lot like you guys knows the science behind why, not just why or, or what to do. Cool. Um, but Bo Dorning, I reached out to him at V23 Athletics and he referred me to Revive. I went and got tested. Um, and my my testosterone came back at 214, I wow. think it was. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they they highly recommended that I get on it. So I finished one month with them. Um, and the next time I got tested, I was up at around 800. Nice. Um, and I, I'm in the middle of my, my third month. So, so definitely starting to feel a lot better, starting to get that, that motivation and drive back, which is good. really why I submitted this question is because I want to get back into it the right way. Good. Now here's a warning. Okay. You're, you're now your testosterone levels are set, uh, in the normal high, you're going to feel a lot more energy. This is not an excuse to beat yourself up That's right. and overtrain. You could still very easily. I know, look, I know guys on bodybuilder levels of anabolics, not TRT, but you know, thousands of times higher than that who overtrain and talk about all the same symptoms that you were talking about. So you're not uh, overtrained proof now because your testosterone levels are, are optimized. Okay. So all the advice we're giving is exactly the same advice, mm -hmm. uh, even though now you're on, uh, you know, testosterone uh, for, for TRT. So you got to do this in a way to where you're taking care of yourself. If you go into it the wrong attitude, you will quit again. You will go into the same cycle again. I promise you. Oh, in one more, let's let's send him over maps and a ball. Jonathan, do you have maps and a ball yet or no? Um, yeah, I, I got the uh, the starter pack. So I have the um, intuitive uh, nutrition, the anabolic, and I think the prime. Oh, oh beautiful, beautiful, yeah. and literally 
follow anabolic to a T. That's it. Do not try and go ab above and beyond or add more because you think you can do more. That's not the strategy right now. In fact, I want to do one more thing too. Could you throw Jonathan in our forum too? So I'm gonna, yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm going to throw you in our, our, our private forum so you can stay with us and give us updates how you're going because I, I really want to make sure that you follow anabolic to a T and focus actually on building muscle right now, especially since you're on TRT. Your body's going to respond nice to building muscle. This is a great time to speed that metabolism up. But if you follow that uh, that whole program for three months, I guarantee halfway through it, you're feeling like a whole different person. Awesome. I appreciate that. And I mean, yeah, you guys are you're hitting the nail on the head because I was I was known at the guy at, you know, at, I went to Lifetime was when I was doing a lot of lift, weightlifting and I would have people come up to me like, man, you really like to kick your own ass. So yeah. you, guys, yeah. you guys nailed it on the head. You deserve so to be taken. Yeah. You, you, you deserve I to take it, care man. of yourself, brother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, Thanks appreciate for calling, it. Thank man. you so much. No problem. Yeah, it's good. I, I wanted to bring up the, you know, the, the fact that he was on, cause in, in his, a lot of listeners don't know, but we get their questions ahead of time. And so I saw that he had said he was on testosterone replacement therapy. And one of the hurdles that, you know, cause we work now with uh, a great TRT facility, by the way, which is, you can do this, I think countrywide, I think they can ship anywhere, um, which you can go to mphormones.com and they're the best ones. We've, uh, you know, we've gone through a lot of them. They're the best ones. But one of the hurdles that people run into is they're like, oh, now I feel great. Testosterone is optimized. Now I'm going to go do that crazy routine and my body's going to respond great. No, it's not. You're not a superhero. You don't have right. like this unlimited recovery ability. You still will run into the same problems. You still, all the same principles apply. And I wanted to say that because if someone's listening who did, who went down that path and they may think, well, you know, working out like crazy didn't work before, but now it will work. Probably not. You're probably still going to overtrain. Well, or even worse, it does work a little bit. I mean, that's, I would, I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, I mean, this was common in the competitive space. I saw lots of guys dieting terrible, training terrible, but yet had great physiques. So, you know, sometimes you- In spite of, right? Yeah, in spite of your, your training and your diet, because you're taking TRT, your body responds a hell of a lot better. You know, if you take somebody like this, like this guy who's got, was at 200, yeah. his, and then he goes up to 800, his body is primed to build muscle way better than it was sure. mm -hmm. in the previous three months. So it might send this false signal. He starts going, if he were to go back to his way of routine, it's like, oh, wow, he starts right. losing body fat. He builds a little bit of muscle because he's now on TRT. Yeah. So he, thinks, he pulls himself right out of balance again. That's right. Yeah, but remember, TRT is not like the competitive world. Yeah. I mean, 800 versus no, which no. Is bringing 7, back to healthy yeah. levels. My, which, yeah, my point, though, of bringing better. up the, the competitors is just that you can you can be taking these this testosterone and still be making bad food and exercise choices for yourself yep. and see some results that's the point of bringing that up not that it's the same or anything like that but he that's the i think that's the danger of TRT for someone who doesn't like if you just think that that's the answer right like you go oh like yeah, i have right. super low levels so now i'm just going to add TRT do everything else the same mm -hmm. no you're it's not ideal and even if you do see some results you got to be careful that the, those new results aren't because oh all i just need to do is fix totally. my TRT i have all these other things that i'm doing wrong but because in spite like you said you still see some results because the TRT was yeah. so helpful but i mean his his pattern was super i mean you, you know beach body <laughs> most of the workouts are yeah Hit and routine, yeah, hit CrossFit, based. yeah, just all these like beat the crap out of yourself. And and by day. the way, I mean another. I know we've this is kind of a dead horse for a lot of people that have been listening for a long time. But if you're new to listening and have heard us talk about CrossFit and we we throw jabs every once in a while, this is the reason why because he represents a majority of the people I train in my career, and yeah. I would think you you guys also. Totally. The, oh yeah, he's very very similar to the general pop. And the worst thing this guy can do is go train that way. Well, yeah. I had to have these conversations so many times. And yeah. I think that's why it sounds like I'm this big hater or something. I'm not a big hater. It's just that I've had to have so many conversations to help people get, you know, restore their body again and like take them back through the, the process of finding that right dose because they were so extreme. Yeah. By the way, I want I do want to say this, uh, working hard doesn't guarantee results in no, anything. No, In anything, not just your body. Look, it, you can... Even in business, you can you can work your ass off and apply yourselves in a stupid way. Not be smart, not be efficient. You could do this with anything. I could dig a hole with a spoon, work my ass off. I'm not going to get very far versus using a shovel or a backhoe. So, you know, I know you were saying it works for other things. I think what happens is people progress in spite of the fact that they're doing things wrong because they keep pushing the same button, which is harder. But smarter is better than harder always. So, and especially when it comes to your body. 
Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.